Salutation Shades, and welcome back to your one-stop shop for all things strange and unusual. Talking with Shadows, the conversation everyone has, but no one wants to admit to. Here with your host, Vic Whaley. And Marcus D. And we want to give a big shout out to our newest patron supporter. Wait, wait, we got a new patron? You yes, we did. Me. I know. I wanted you to be, like, surprised. This is your natural I, reaction. I, I am very surprised. Yes. We want to give a big shout out to our newest patron supporter, Nighthawk. Thank you so much for becoming a patron. Awesome. I know, I've been camping on that for a couple <laughs> days until we recorded this episode, so you'd be pleasantly surprised, by I the love, way. Love the name, though. Yes, absolutely. So thank you so much for the support. We appreciate it so much. And thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode. We always appreciate any kind of support that you guys give us. Even though we don't deserve it, I don't think, but you guys yeah. decide to listen to us. We are unworthy. We are unworthy of your praise. We... We, we believe that. Although we're trying to be better. We're being good boys today, and instead of drinking copious amounts of alcohol, we are drinking Sonic drinks and eating Dots pretzels. Yeah. What, uh, what, are, you, what are you having today? I, I am drinking Fanta or a Fanta orange slushy. I got myself a Diet Lime Limeade where I had to squeeze my own limes. Yeah, every single time we go to the Sonic by your house, uh, by our house, they never... Crush the limes into your drink. I know, like, most of them even do that, but the Sonic by our house is, like, kind of the worst Sonic it in It is. Evansville. It is the worst Sonic in <laughs> And we go there every single time we pretty much record an episode, do kind of like a pre-episode meeting. And I don't know why we keep going, but we, I guess we just like being mean to our bodies, I guess, <laughs> and our, and our souls. We do. Um, but again, thank you guys so much for checking out this episode. Um... Also, we want to give a big shout out first before we get into this episode to our good friend Johnny Smith from the Inquisitive Minds podcast, who we were just on his podcast uh, as of two days ago, where we were talking about the real men in black. Okay, he's really fun to talk with. Absolutely. Like, this is the second time we've been on his channel, and I've had a blast both yeah. times. If you guys have not checked out the Inquisitive Minds podcast, absolutely go over. Because if you go over, you actually get to, like, see us live and see how nerdy we look the only downside of it is we kind of ran out of time we we had no. prepped so much stuff and we just didn't have time to go over it all so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have her, him over here and we're gonna do a second half follow-up yeah, to it we're gonna do a bonus episode where we bring him onto our podcast again and we're gonna continue talking about the real men in black so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the link to our uh, inter uh our interview uh, on the Quiz of Mind podcast and a link below so you guys can check that out ahead of next week. Uh, and then whenever we bring him back on again, we'll just continue the conversation. That way you guys get a full Total Encompass conversation. Uh, Essentially, us talking about the real men in black phenomenon. The weird thing, this wasn't even like a planned thing. You, you you know how people do on YouTube. It's like, oh, come on our channel, and then we'll go on your channel. No, this was just, we ran out of out of time to talk about all this stuff. <laughs> and, you know, and we droned on and on and on and on and on about some stuff. But, yeah, I, it's going to be fun. We're going to bring him back. And he's such a fantastic guy. Uh, to talk to and to listen to, so it's going to be a lot of fun bringing him back to the uh, to the podcast again. Okay, what we got as far as comments? Boom! So that's right. So in our last episode, uh, episode forty nine, we talked about the Kentucky meat shower as well as falling rock phenomenon uh, around the world. So if you guys have not checked that episode, totally go check that episode out because it was a lot of fun talking about probably one of the weirdest weather phenomenon stories in the paranormal. Just literally in Kentucky in the 19th century, it rained meat for several minutes in a small Kentucky town. Very weird. Very weird. Let's see. Luna Oya She Lives. I like what you did there. Says, Dogfish Head has nice beers. Namaste White is one of my favorites. Reverse osmosis. Ha! Love this channel. I'm pretty positive I was not enjoying the alcohol you were drinking that in that episode, if I do remember that correctly. I like Dog Head. I'm trying to remember exactly which one we or I was drinking that day. The problem is oh, yeah, it was that one with the really long name. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's no, 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 you didn't even try that one because uh, when he first brought that over, I'm like, don't don't even try it. You're not going to like it because you never like anything with even the slightest hint of sour. <laughs> 
Jules Dean said, so you're drinking that skewy water, unboiled, unfiltered, and you've got vaccinated. That's the shit you should have research made. Maybe we should discuss that topic. That's scary. Absolutely, drinking of his water is a horrifying roll of the dice sometimes. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know if you're going to get, like, crazy mutant powers or die. <laughs> well, I, I do have a water filter, but it needs a new filter, I so... I don't think any water filter is up to the task for Evansville Water Man. Like, I actually tested it some years ago. I used to keep a small biology lab, like, in my kitchen, which would mean I'd be growing, like, moss and stuff <laughs> right next door to preparing food. Absolutely. And I actually tested the water parameters in, like, my little water treatment lab, mm. and it registered... It, the ammonia content was high enough to register, which was scary. All I got from that was you have some sort of weird secret lab that you research stuff and do weird experiments. Maybe. Uh-huh. Moving Don't on. Give me that look. <laughs> mo- 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 moving on. New patron Nighthawk says, I think the vulture theory is the most correct. The report says that most of the pieces were two to four inches in size, about right to be bite-sized for a vulture. Vultures tear off chunks of meat and swallow them whole, which would not only explain the lack of bones since they would avoid eating bones, but why the chunks are still intact and why it's only meat and not fur. One of the vultures probably ate a bad chunk of meat and vomited, causing the others to do the same. I had a really good response to that argument when I did this video, but now that I've filled my head with new research, I can't remember. No, I remember what it is because... Because the re- the issue that we have with that theory, which again, I'm not saying that's not a good that's not a good uh, theory, but I think if that was what happened, then the story would would have been starting with, oh, there was this large flock of vultures overhead, and then they started vomiting chunks of meat on us. Oh wait, I remember what it was now. It was the length of time the rain occurred. Yeah, because it was several minutes. Although I will say, I think he is correct that out of the theories put forward. It's the only one that makes any sense at all. Uh, on that level, I think he's definitely right. Mm-hmm. And th- there's probably going to be at least some sort of plausible explanation to it. It's probably going to be that. Oh, I learned a interesting thing that kind of connected to our video we did a while ago about raining animals. Mm-hmm. And, okay, check this out. The primary argument for when it rains fish, like especially saltwater fish... Is that the water? Is, or the water and the animals are being sucked up by a water spout and then being dumped back over a town, right? Mm-hmm. The water is never salt water; it's always fresh water, just like rain is. Because you know, rain it it, it doesn't right. carry the salt with it. It's always it's never salt water. In in a case where it's raining sea fish over a town, that makes no sense to be a water spout. That's even weirder. Yeah, yeah, it's really like think about what that has to mean right there. Hmm. The implications of it are tantalizing right there. But okay, okay. <laughs> Interesting. Uh finally Nick Sabaz says, Boys new plan, the Transylvania University mystery meat heist. <laughs> oh I love my. that. I, I love that God, idea. I love this. I plan. like this idea. <laughs> Kidding aside, I do think there must be a hole in reality or something like that, for example. Where would someone have an extreme abundance of 14th century coins laying around? Not to mention quartz is a difficult material to mine. So some ruffians couldn't just dig it up and go prank people. You know, this kind of leads a... I don't know if I got into the episode where I was talking about this, but if you you, look at so many of these stories of of random crap raining from the sky... It kind of sounds like a glitch in a computer game, like some like some sort of glitch that you would just put it like into a Grand Theft Auto game where you would just cause it to rain fish or rain meat, something randomly like that. I don't know. The fact that we you know we just recently just finished all these weird internet legends, and my mind's been going with like glitches in the Matrix and stuff like from the internet. It makes me like go back to that. Are we in a simulation thing and just rain? There's just some sort of computer glitch, and that's what's causing stuff to rain from the sky. 
I got no clue, man. <laughs> I don't generally subscribe to like the whole glitch in the Matrix thing, but I think a lot of it goes back to the fact that I just really did not like reading Rene Descartes in college. <laughs> and that's just soured any ideas even remotely like that. No, I'm okay with it because it make, it gives me somebody to blame for how ugly we are. Like, like somebody programmed us to look this ugly. It's not our fault. What are you talking about? I know you look terrible, but man, I look nice. You look terrible. You look like the only homeless goth person in the city of Evansville. You not go go watch our video and go watch our video on the Inquisitive Minds podcast and tell me I'm lying. Tell me I'm lying. To quote a quote from you, you look like you're about to go fill a Taco Bell interview. That's true. That's true. I've got to tear in my jeans right now. I have to go buy new jeans. Oh my god, that's huge. <laughs> Like my whole knee is sticking That's up. That's way past being stylish. That's just, that. Those are almost shorts. I've been trying to bring the grunge look back since like 2005. But <laughs> since I got out of high school. Go home and burn those. <laughs> God. Oh my God. We do not make good first. <clears throat> we do not make good first impressions. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. That's why we have voices. We're not on air. So, or we don't see. You don't see our faces. Just hear our voices. <laughs> okay. 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 So something that I wanted to to. to touch based on in this episode continuing with our theme of talking about paranormal weather phenomenon is the concept of lightning now if you guys are familiar with our channel you probably know that me and vic don't get into ghost stuff all that often I, we admit, I we admit it, knows, but I find the subject a little boring to talk about for prolonged periods of time. It has to be a ghost with a hook. Now we like talking about like we like going on ghost hunts. We oh, yeah. like you know we've we've done that, but I, the real core crux like of me being interested in like in a ghost story, it's usually the the history of the place, like something that's connected to it. That's usually what's got to dive in. That's why we always end up doing like monsters and just strange phenomenon, but. For the purpose of this, I really got into to lightning because I was reading an article the other day that was talking about lightning increasing paranormal phenomenon, like specifically increasing ghost phenomenon. And if you think about it, like if you think about a lot of stories of people telling like their house being haunted or some of their encounters, even with the other paranormal in general, how does it always start, right? It's like on a dark and stormy night, like so many times. So it makes me wonder whether or not if something could be causing that. Now, I was watching uh, a little bit of Justin Brown from from Interface Death on his channel, and he's been on our podcast before. And one of the things he's talked about, and Ricky De and Ricky Bruckman from Mount Vernon Paranormal talks about to talked at length about this with me too. He was talking about like generally believing that a lot of ghost entities absorb like EMF, like absorb EMF energy and they're, and they're absorbing energy around, around people. So if you think about lightning and what that does, like a lightning strike itself will cause EMF phenomenon, like will will increase EMF around it. So that would probably increase ghost activity, am I right? Oh yeah, I, I'm a big believer in ghosts affecting electronics and particularly drawing from electronics. Like when, um, oh God, the Benham Scloss in when we we're on that investigation, when I was walking into the uh, supposedly mo one of the most haunted parts of the, uh, it's a hotel now, it was originally a school. When I was walking into the basement, uh, I have a little lantern I take with me. It's an electronic lantern and I'm using it to look down the stairwell. And then I just hear this pop and my light goes out. And I go back up and I open it up and do you know what happened? <laughs> my my batteries literally exploded. Are you serious? Oh yeah, no, it was just battery acid and wow. the nasty yellowish foam stuff just all over there. It ruined the lantern. I couldn't use it anymore. It was just the batteries literally exploded in it. I was just gonna talk about like electronic drain phenomenon of people having like the batteries have sucked out, but you're talking about like it just exploding. All four batteries. That's crazy. Just exploded. Well that's also where you saw the ghosts doing that thing i didn't personally see it um we can't I'm, fully get into the story okay 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 we'll, we'll say this for a later thing but yeah, yeah there was kind but, of some signs there might be ghosts doing the nasty and then that later confirmed yeah, by a yeah. very embarrassed groundskeeper okay we'll, we'll talk about that story another day no you've told that we've told that story before yeah i've we, already told the story apparently <laughs> no we did we did the story in the in the uh in the pillow talk segment before we've had oh. we've had we've had wreck i'm pretty sure that we have if we have when we get ricky back we'll tell that story i promise that we'll but it's pretty it's pretty graphic it's a little for, saucy it's a little saucy yeah for 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 this part of the podcast but yes 
And so the fact that you you know you saw probably some extreme ghost phenomenon, and yet the batter and the batteries in your lan- lantern thing exploding absolutely probably goes along with this idea that like you know electronics and will cause that. I couldn't even imagine like what a lightning strike would do, like what, what that could cause. So one thing that I was that I, when I was thinking about this, I was uh, thinking about. I want to try to find some stories of like ghost hunters going out like during thunderstorms and during lightning storms to see, Oh, would that really change their experiences? And then I just kind of realized that like, you, 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 you want to volunteer you, for that? No, you Marcus? don't like, that's what ends up happening. Like so many of them get canceled. Like I didn't even think about it until you really started like digging into that. I'm like, Oh yeah. Like if it's like raining, it's going to end up canceling so many paranormal, paranormal excursions. Like I, I, I will go, on a paranormal excursion when it's raining. I do not want to go when it's raining lightning. <laughs> that's that's true. That's true. That's true. I don't want to become one of the ghosts haunting the place. You know, so it, it, it made me wonder, like, how much strange paranormal phenomenon just goes unseen. But it also might explain why so many of the stories involving lightning strikes and paranormal phenomenon are often in the people's homes because you're generally trapped indoors during bad weather like that and that, I mean, that's why maybe that shapes so many of the paranormal stories that we hear uh regarding lightning because of that it's weird okay so is your theory that it's just giving up a very powerful electromagnetic yeah, pulse yeah. in that basically or not electric, electric pulse and then they're using that to feed yeah. in that potentially amping up paranormal yeah. activity because when you go out like on like many paranormal investigators what they'll use they'll use emf readers right they use yes. emf meters to try to Use that as a means of detecting entities or whatever and things like that. Whether they're made of it, whether they're, whether they, when they're manifesting and causes it, whether they're draining it from somewhere, whatever. So generally, if you're having a lightning storm going on, then that would just cause it to be, you know, it's like, it's like a three ninety nine shrimp buffet, you know, going on for these things where they would just be munching away. Speaking of munching away, these Dutch pretzels are good. But I'm pretty sure they can hear every crunch I have. Oh, probably. Oh, <laughs> I'm well, going to stop eating those. Talk with your mouth full. Okay. I, uh, it's been a long existing theory. I, I, I was aware of it during the... Or I wasn't aware of it. I'm, I'm aware of people talking about it back in the 60s. It may have predated that. Hmm. But electronic drain phenomena is a thing. I've experienced it. Tons of other people have experienced it. I've heard of like various tests on it as well. Some re- yielding good results, other ones not. Um, so and it, it makes sense that that would be a, a potential thing. Mm. Oh, God, what was it? What, There's what? also tons of like old rumors of like storms displacing spirits and stuff, and that's the spirits are out during storms and things along those lines. Another thing, too, that I was thinking about is when I was reading a lot of uh, shadow people stories, uh, a lot of... Shadow people stories also occurred during thunderstorms. Really? I didn't know that one. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of people that were talking about uh, like seeing them one night while it was raining outside or while there was a bad storm going on outside that they report seeing them like in their house and things like that. So one of the things that we had talked about when we've talked about uh, shadow people phenomena is our general theory that they they live in our fear, right? Mm-hmm. So imagine like people, like imagine what a thunderstorm would bring would probably be terrified you know, the crap out of some people living in their home or, you know, whether it's kids or people or whatever living in their home. And that would just, again, make somebody rife for a shadow person, a shadow person encounter. I've also always considered the idea of it becoming cold around a ghost connected to that. Mm -hmm. That if the ghost is attempting to manifest, it's going to need energy. If it's going to move something, theoretically, it's going to need mass. But all mass really is, is a ton of energy condensed. And if where are they going to get this energy? I'm pretty sure they're probably not eating. So probably what's happening is they're absorbing it from the area around it. Well, what would it actually look like if the energy from the area surrounding an entity... Like, let, let's say I had this ability to absorb energy out of the air. Mm-hmm. What would it look like if I suddenly began to do it? You, well, first of all, I think you would look sad while doing that because you just referred to yourself as compressed energy. And you are absolutely more than that, little buddy. You are, you you are, you're you're up there, man. But it, it would be things would grow cold. Right. The electrons would slow down in the atoms. Like 
you if it's extreme enough, I could even see it being to the point where you could see your breath. Mm-hmm. Like I, I think there's viability here. I think it meshes up with. I like it when old, old lore about a creature meshes up with a theory that is somewhat scientific. Mm-hmm. One thing that I really wanted to know is, as I'm wondering, oh god, I would imagine then, and I, but don't hold me this. I would think if we bring our theory that. People using Ouija boards, and again, you guys know my opinion on Ouija boards, and if you don't, don't. Uh, anyway, using Ouija boards, that it would probably be more effective than probably during a lightning storm. Oh, God, I'm giving, or, bad, I'm giving bad tips. Don't do it! <laughs> or, actually, I, a better way to test this than waiting for a lightning storm is to have a Tesla coil or Jacob's ladder or something like that that's just throwing off tons of electricity. God, I feel like we're about to get somebody hurt by doing this because you're about to just be a using a Ouija board or playing with electricity. I don't, mean... Don't do it without proper scientific supervision. It wouldn't be that hard to create one of these devices. I mean, they're not that complicated. I don't, I don't think I can do it, man. I got like a D in shop class, man. I don't think I could build a Jacob's ladder. Like I'm, I'm actually thinking about if we should try something like this. Like, <laughs> during the next lightning storm that we try we, to, we wouldn't. We're, we basically would be having the lightning storm. No, we got to do. We got to have a lightning storm on top of building a Jacob's ladder with a Ouija board in the room. Us not using it. I I don't care. I'll use a Ouija board. Okay, and, and then, not, then we'll I'm see. Not scared we'll, of it. And then we'll see whether or not if that itself causes some sort of bizarre phenomenon. Hasbro is yet to make a game to <laughs> cow me. <laughs> I will take on any of its board games, including Ouija. You know, you think about a like you think about like Hasbro, like why everybody now is into true crime, paranormal podcasts, and stuff like that. Man, they made games like the they got games like the Ouija board operation and Mousetrap. Wondering why we all grew up the way we did. But Please. seriously, if we get a hold of like a simple Tesla coil or something, is this something that you do legitimately want to try? Because I am in. As long as it doesn't end like that one story of you creating floating balls of electricity that like caught on fire, like several Are you talking about them. the ionic lifter I built? Yes. Like, uh, yeah, that was a lot. A lot of stories of you building uh, things and with them either exploding or catching on fire or both. I'm not great at soldering. But maybe I have someone else help me with this. Okay. But if, if you're in, I'm actually interested yeah. in trying I this. I think this would be a cool idea. And then we uh, we get Ellie supervised to make sure we don't kill ourselves. Ellie's not that good as with science. No, okay. but she she's might be good with, with chemistry. A, no, she's good with a fire extinguisher. Fair, fair. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Talking about lightning, though, there is a lot of weird things that can happen with lightning. I've collected a lot of stories of... Not necessarily are paranormal on themselves, but the way the lightning acts on it is so far out of left field, I would classify it as paranormal. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of just... Again, we looked at this when we when we started even looking at just weather phenomena and realizing how much we don't fully know about the weather. So, yeah. And, and lightning is uh, considered to be a bit of erratic science anyways, and anomalous lightning like ball lightning or blue fairies are even less understood. Some of my absolute favorite Magic the Gathering cards. Ball lightning is actually kind of a fun one. <laughs> I'm I did, pretty sure I didn't realize blue fairy was a Magic I the think Gathering card. Probably it's been a long one. time. probably a blue fairy Magic card. And there probably is. But okay, check this out. Vernon, France, 1873. Uh, the lady of the house was out watching a storm. She's, she's inside just watching her garden. Okay. And there's a lightning strike in her garden. She doesn't rush out to check it because she's smart enough not to do something like that. She waits till the storm ends and then goes out to expect to see if there's any uh, any damage to it. She gets out there and where the lightning struck, there is now a three inch perfectly circular hole in the garden deeper than she can ascertain. Perfectly round. That's crazy. Also, everything within Three or everything immediately within the area was dead. Over the next few weeks, everything within three feet of the area where the lightning struck and left that mark had now died, including half a tree. The thing is, the radius it's going out in a perfect circle, and there was a tree that fell right on that line. The side of the tree that was within the circle was now desiccated. The other side looked like it was relatively healthy. Over a period of time, let's see, over over a period of 12 years, 
This zone slowly expanded, eventually petering out at 21 feet. That's crazy. Where nothing within that 21-foot zone would grow, and all the plants that had previously lived in that garden within that area were now dead. What you think? I'm trying to think. That's like that's like almost seven. That's almost <laughs> seven yards, man. That's huge. This is such a peculiar story. First, well, right at the bat, it makes me think that like honestly, something from like space that was irradiated hit the Earth. Yeah, but how would why would that travel down with a lightning bolt? Oh, I don't... Maybe light, Maybe Zeus struck an alien ship. I don't know. That's crazy. And it just went to the Earth with it. Also, let's let's talk about the hole for a sec. Mm-hmm. How often do you really see a perfectly round hole anyways? Yeah. That's, that's pretty unusual. And why would lightning create... Like, lightning can strike the ground, and if the soil is sandy enough, create, like, this glass bolt that goes I, into the ground. I did know that. I have seen Sweet Home Alabama. I have not. I well, that's where I learned it from. I learned it from an episode of the X Files, because <laughs> I'm cool like that. <laughs> we just have different research methods. <laughs> <laughs> that is not how you research. Okay, but the thing is, this wouldn't leave a a deep hole. This would leave glass buried underneath the surface of the ground. Correct. And I in as I understand, uh, lightning can leave a crater but should not ever leave something that seems to be like a cylinder hole in the ground. This is almost like someone took a metal, like a piece of rebar, and just tamped down the ground and just very carefully took it back out. Look, I know that lightning itself causes radiation, but I don't think that radiation by itself just kills plants even on going out from that. Now, don't hold hold me to that, but but I'm pretty sure that that it doesn't. Also, this would have to... Well, the thing is, it would have to be a radiation with a long half-life. All right, but if it was like something from space that came down and was irradiated, that would absolutely kill, probably kill plant life around it. And it would just keep creeping. And I guess perhaps if it was like a meteorite that was extremely attractive for lightning, perhaps it had landed previously mm-hmm. and then was struck by lightning. And perhaps this while it was in its solid form, could contain the radiation, but then once it was split open, then it began to slowly radiate out. Um, We don't even have the name for the lady of the house. I'm assuming she didn't wish to disclose her identity. But there there was no... This was obviously something that was monitored over a long period of time. Mm -hmm. And there was nothing in the report about, you know, health problems. If That's true. Then you would be seeing health problems with people that lived in the house. The other thing is you would... You would expect to see if it was radiation. I would, or at least I would expect to see that in some areas there's deaths, but in other areas there's extreme growth. Because like we've covered in other other things in the channel, radiation can cause dramatically accelerated growth in plants. True. I think, I think this is something different, but I would be at a loss to fully give a solid explanation to why my only thought is if i'm if i'm trying to figure this out maybe there is something already within the ground something that would be toxic to plants that then ruptured seeped into the ground and then just start slowly killing things off but the thing is most things that you would use to kill plants its half-life isn't long enough to cause damage over that long of a period of time i mean this had to be something pretty toxic. because mm-hmm. And the other thing is, the, the rate at which it spread was very slow. You're seeing change. Like, she documents the changes in it over the course of years. And based on, like, some of the information, it didn't seem like it was a fast progression. It also was something that didn't peter out till 12 years later. Mm-hmm. It's almost like something that was down there and was just sort of leaking out and just radiating out. Yeah, but it's just, I can't think of anything that's going to quite match that with what with the effects on the rest of the garden, how long it took for it to peter out, the consistency and slow rate of it petering out. Well, I mean, I know that with 
like atomic radiation and things like that would like when there's been tests like that the radiation from that will spread even over time like once there was like a nuclear explosion like the radiation will just continue to spread and go and grow outwards and stuff like that but which is why it made me think that it might have something that is irradiated like that i wonder what all is going to have a half-life that's going to put it in the range of 12 years that i don't know and that might be a decent way of coming up with some potentials but at Again, the same time, this why, was, this why was, the heck, with a lightning strike? This all began with a lightning well, strike. Yeah, and it was also like, you know, in the night, late 19th century. So it's not it's not like it's going to be any sort of nuclear technology that we created that caused it. If it is a radiation, it's definitely not something that should normally exist within lightning. Right. I believe the lightning, that, or the or radiation that comes through with lightning has an extremely short half-life. I think we're talking seconds, mm -hmm. if I recall correctly. Oh, but yeah. it's been it's been a while. This is baffling. Just baffling. It's weird. Whatever you guys think this is, definitely leave comments below to tell us what you guys think about this weird, strange story. Okay, are you ready for another one? I want another one. I like these stories. <laughs> okay, I got I got I got quite a few really, really weird ones. Okay. This is a shorter one, but it is very odd. This one's Quite possibly weirder than the previous one. Okay. R.J. Davis in Johannesburg in 1920 uh, looked outside and saw ball lightning. Okay. The ball lightning seemed to have been attempting to move up a hill. As he took a closer examination, the ball lightning seemed to have had tooth-like structures on it, assisting it in attempting to climb the hill yet it still seemed to have struggled. After struggling for a while, the ball lightning then rolled down the hill into a nearby stone wall, exploded in flames, doing no severe damage to the wall, and leaving a acrid, sulfurous smell. And at the end of that, the man screaming, Whoa! as he finished his beer. Riddle me that with that's, your logic. That's bizarre. Like I know about, like I know of ball lightning and stuff like that, but it having teeth and the... ball lightning is so poorly understood that it's still a bit of an argument on does ball lightning exist? It's like I remember in my natural science class this coming up, and my my science professor was like, "Yes, ball lightning probably does exist." We just don't really understand anything about it. Like, like he's like, I can't tell you anything about what. Like, ball I'm, t I'm typing and I'm getting a lot of orb videos, or just obviously just fake, like photoshopped videos of this. But basically, when it comes down to it, it's a ball of lightning. But let's get into this thing. <laughs> it's ball lightning with teeth. Like, and. Okay, well, first of all, have you ever been, like, kind of plump trying to get up a hill? It's difficult, man, all right? I'm not surprised it had difficulty getting up there. God, man, rolled down the hill and just pissed off and exploded. But it's more the... Okay, here's here's two, two issues, and I want to talk out both. A, by what means did it form teeth, and more importantly, B... How, by what means of intelligence would it consider utilizing this tool? Well, when he says teeth, if I'm, if I'm going to give a, a skeptical answer of what he's talking about, it might be talking about like, oh God, you ever seen like those, like those balls of like, oh, I don't know what they're called. They're like in Spencer's and they're like a dome and it's like shoots like. Yeah, it's a Tesla coil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he I'm like wondering if it's like that, if stuff arcing off of that and it's giving the, like the appearance of teeth. Because the ball, because balls of lightning move, they're, they're yeah. mobile. They don't ever stay as they are. So if it's rotating and it's caught, it, it might be causing these like little arcs to be, you know, arcing more and give the giving the appearance of teeth. Um, I guess that could look like they. To me, when electricity grabs at things like that, it looks more like maybe tentacles or hair or hair. Yeah, I can see hair. Um, but teeth would be odd. Also. Rolling up a hill also seems odd. Um, my w one of my thoughts is if if his description and he did say it, it was attempting to use these teeth like treads, 
Mm-hmm. So I'm assuming that he got a good enough look on it to actually make this a legitimate report. Mm-hmm. But if, I mean, like I mentioned earlier, matter is basically condensed energy and enough energy is matter. You just need an awful lot of energy to get any sort of mass. I could, I think that if it's trying to, if it has enough energy, it's creating mass. I think it potentially utilizing something like that makes at least some physical sense. It would also make sense on why it would then have to give up and roll back down the hill because manifesting that mass would probably be Mm -hmm. very taxing on it. Now, what I'm at a loss altogether on is the intelligence that would be needed to know to use a tool means it needs some manner of intelligence. Which is not normally an attribute we prescribe to lightning. That's true. As a matter of fact, most <laughs> like weather-based natural phenomena, we don't really assign <laughs> intelligence to. I mean, unless you're wanting to say this thing like itself is like the like a lightning spirit, like something like from like Cows Moving Castle or whatever, like the fire spirit. Thing. Like I, I did okay, I'm not gonna lie, for some of these I did consider the possibility of elementals. Or spirits, something along those lines as a maybe possibility. It's like, I want to know what it was trying to get up that hill. Because, like, there there are a few stories. Some of these are not stories that I prep for this, but are kind of coming up right now. Where lightning uh, comes in through a window and... Tra- oh, wait, no, it wasn't lightning. It was a ball of lightning that came in through the window, destroyed everything in the room, fried all the wiring... And dissipated. There was only one thing in the room it did it left untouched. The baby sitting on the floor. Weird. Destroyed, melted, burnt, and fried everything else. And people attract real lightning. I mean we do, right, don't we? Yes, yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean we're you know, we're there, there's people who make a study out. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we conduct lightning. You know, so the fact that it's like dodging a person in the room is even kind of weirder. It's peculiar and there's other stories along those lines like i said th- those are i can't give you the dates on this one because this wasn't a story that i really prepped i didn't think i'd be bringing it up maybe today. they're just like really aggressive orbs um it makes me wonder if some of these things have a degree of intelligence or if there's maybe some sort of small creature in the middle of it that we do not fully understand that's some sort of electrical hyperconductor way more extreme than the electric eel um, <clears throat> the idea of like these kind of light based electrical controlling atmospheric slugs I've heard get thrown around before. That's weird. I mean, um, I'm thinking of maybe it's just an orb that like chugged a, f- a five hour energy and then just went like, like, let's get wrecked, bro. And just started like cutting loose. But going back to like the RJ Davis story though. We're struggling with the idea that it could have some intelligence. But there's something else that happens at the end of the story. It rolls down the hill and hits the stone wall. And then explodes into flames. Which can make sense if it's it's dispersing a huge amount of energy. It could even ignite the air in the area. But in so many of these stories, there's a very specific sulfuric acrid smell. Well, what if it's a... What if, what if what it is is just gas, like a ball of gas that's engulfed in flames, and that's what's causing this? That's like burning really brightly. Well, because balls of lightning last longer than thunderstrikes, which would make sense for something that's like burning like a gas. Mm-hmm. And then if it's got that kind of a sulfur smell, that would probably also explain it, maybe it could, what it is. Some, some gases could explain it, mm-hmm. but one of the issues is gas disperses. It doesn't exist within a, a ball form. Well, what if the what if what the electricity does it helps keep it in that form? But if it's just burning gas, why does it need electricity? I don't know. I'm not a scientist. I don't know. <laughs> this. But no, Nikola Tesla. One of his his theory on what causes these things is that it's gas. Is that it's balls of gas, and that's what's causing this. Maybe that's what. Maybe what the maybe what the electricity does is it causes it to keep it in the ball shape, and it and it's igniting it. Again, and- any answer we give. It's Tesla, so I'm gonna give him give him some credit. I like Tesla. I had the lighting part. He said the gas part. Oh, <laughs> but I'm, what I'm what I'm saying. The weirdest thing is there's so many theories on what this is, but nobody's again got a confirmed theory. Like nobody's, we still don't know what causes these things. 
I'm going to I'm gonna throw out Lightning Demon. demon. I know you were, I know that's where you're going with well, the Demon. Well, whenever you go Sulfuric, you you got to at least entertain the possibility. But weirdly that, enough, this uh, this scent is described in many ball lightning encounters. Where it was trying to go up a hill upset? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it was drunk. <laughs> He's trying to lose weight. He's like, I'm going to get to the top of that hill. You just you watch. That crap roll down the hill. Oh man, could you be? Could you imagine being the guy who saw this? Yeah, trying to tell that to the cops. <laughs> like there was a, a ball of lightning, and it had teeth, and it was trying to go up a hill, but then it slid down, and exploded. There, I, I bet that story ends with, and then the guy got thrown in the drunk tank. Okay, I've got a short one for you. I couldn't get a year on this one. Uh, Ian Matz, England uh, reported. While he's walking along, he sees what seems to be a blue-green, glowing, almost wool-like anomaly on the ground. Okay. Kind of crackling, self-illuminating. And as he watches, it drifts off and goes into some trees. And he can hear it kind of this soft kind of sound as it moves through the trees. And then it moves out of the trees towards the local pub. And then it comes to rest against the wall of the pub where there is a massive explosive sound and brought down the wall. It's bank robbers. <laughs> <laughs> Getting drunk and robbing a pub instead. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It's burglars. Okay. Sometimes it's called like string ball lightning mm -hmm. where it effectively acts as if ball lightning... Except for it has this kind of stringy look. It's rarely reported, and apparently is highly volatile. Well, yeah, I think because it's it's prob it's probably compacted in there, and once the, like the lightning or the energy gets out, like probably it destabilizes, and that's what causes it to explode. But oddly enough, it interacted with the if it made sound moving through the trees. That makes me think it was interacting with the trees or rolling over things. Or rolling over things, but like if it's something up in a tree, probably what's going on is, well, it's probably brushing against leaves, wood, and other things that should conduct it. Well, it, truthfully, most of these seem like they're always moving with a purpose. Like a lot of these, like like you would think that honestly, if these were just a random natural phenomenon, that there would be more erratic movements to it. But this one, you know, the first one, it's going up a hill. You have the one of the baby where it's avoiding a person. This one where it's taking a weird path into the woods, out of the woods, and then rolling into a rolling into a, a wall. And the more we talk about it, the more it really makes me feel, and trust me, I can't really explain it right now, that this is a self-guided purpose. That there's something about this that in some way possesses some amount of intelligence. And that intelligence is... Screw you all. Like, there's there's a lot... A commonality in ball lightning stories seems to be... And I know I'm going to sound crazy here. It expressing a degree of curiosity. Mm -hmm. um, there's lots of just general ball lightning stories where someone sees it outside. It's moving around. And it's almost like it realizes it's noticed and then starts moving towards the house. That's peculiar that it's not doing okay my initial thought would be if it acts at all like regular lightning it should be moving towards whatever the conductor is going to be initially mm -hmm. it shouldn't be changing directions a whole lot of times without some sort of external force acting on it which kind of leads me to the elemental possibility that perhaps or or maybe this odd behavior for whatever this phenomena is, lended lended credence to early man to believe in elementals. Or like, you know, or you know, if it's gonna hit a wall, eventually what's gonna end up happening is this thing. If this thing's moving around, it's gonna hit something, and then the force of it hitting something is gonna go back against it, and it's gonna cause it to pop. You know, when it's running into something like that. So a lot's probably maybe that could be why a lot of these stories are just ending that way, is because this thing is getting hit, and then it's just it's bubbles is being popped, and all the crap's escaping. You know, the baby in the story could have just got real lucky. I'm just saying. I, it, it's totally, po I mean, it's statistically possible. Do I think so? But it's odd. No, it's, it's weird. It's a little weirder than that. I'm just, throwing, I'm just throwing ideas out there, man. I'm playing devil's advocate in this situation. I mean, I and mean, you, you kind of have to, because giving explanation outside of things that are even more difficult to explain 
is very hard. Mm -hmm. Like, sure, I could throw out the concept of elementals, which I've never seen an elemental and have no reason to believe one might exist. Besides, they're cool in D&D, I guess. Uh, that's not a good explanation. <laughs> <laughs> like spirits, like animistic spirits, I believe much more strongly in. And I believe that that is a possibility. But once again, I've never like witnessed phenomena that would match with this. Brian, you, you know, it, I, the fact of that they are so rare that there's not a whole lot of good video footage of these things makes me wonder because i mean it's not like we don't know that lightning's not really things happen so often so something must be going on that whenever these things are forming it's got to be like exceptionally rare but like i think there's a few different forms of lightning that we can confirm definitely exist that we only have like two or three pictures of right like i want to say once again like the blue fairy phenomena i mm. think there's only like a handful I and mean, i might be wrong on this one i didn't look this up beforehand but I want to say that back when I see my natural science class uh, that they had said like the pictures we're looking at are some of the only pictures ever of this phenomena is that rare because some of the con the conditions in order to make some of these things is probably just that rare. So definitely weird food for thought. Absolutely. Yeah. Whatever you guys think about ball lighting, definitely put in the comments below for what you guys think that it is. Do you think that it's a scientific thing that's just rare that when it pops up, do you think that they're elementals, spirits, demons? What do you guys think? But I've got more stories. I'm just saying, we're also getting to about 45 minutes. You want to keep going? We can. Uh, we we have to have something for the patrons anyways. Yeah, yeah. so we're going to slide a little bit. So I think it's a good time for us to, to wrap up this episode. And, but stick around if you're a patron because we've got some more stories for you guys. And right now would probably be a good time to sign up to be a patron. Absolutely. Because... I'm about to, like, I have weirder stories. I have weirder <laughs> stories here, guys. I, you have not gotten to the weirdest Abs stuff I have. Absolutely. So if you guys want to share the rest of this podcast, all you guys got to do is go over to our patron and sign up today. Uh, for as little as a dollar a month, you get all of the rest of our podcasts as well as videos uh, that we post up there just for our patrons and things like that. As well, if you're, if you're a $2 a month member, you get to vote uh, on our monthly poll for what next month's theme is going to be, which right now I do believe... That it is a tie between uh, alien abductions and ghost tap. No, uh, time and space phenomenon. Sorry. Both good. Sorry, yes. I've actually found some stuff. Okay, I'm secretly hoping for the abduction and harvest stuff. But if we end up doing time and space anomaly, I have some stuff that's going to be crossovers between weather and that. Oh, I got some fun stuff for, for either one, whichever one we come up with. So it's going to be fun. But until next time, guys. Keep believing. Because we'll keep listening. All right. So just so you guys know, I was super uh, into wanting to talk about a phenomenon of weird green fireball meteors falling from the sky until I discovered something that apparently meteorologists don't study meteors. Wait, you found stories about green meteorites falling from the sky and chose not to cover it? No, I know about it, but like that, but like most people think that they were meteors or something, and I'm like, oh, this, but this still counts as just strange paranormal phenomenon. Yeah, but it definitely isn't weather. No, first, okay, first of all, meteorology is the study of weather, or thing, or yes. coming from the word meteor, which is Latin for way up there, by the way, or high up there. I my I I'm not good at Latin. This might be true. I'm yes. assuming it's not. And a giant chunk of rock falling from the sky, I think constitutes weather. By the way, every other episode that we did covered prior to this involved strange crap falling from the sky. And I guess that's true. I I wouldn't have fought you on this because <laughs> I'm kind of interested in this now. I kind of want to hear the story of these like glowing green meteorites. Have you never heard? Do you never heard the stories about like the green fireballs falling from the sky? Oh wait, no, I have heard of this. Yes. I've never researched it though. Yes, the green these green fireballs that fell from the sky. Yes, that the U.S. government put so much money into, and they called it Project Twinkle. Wait, this sounds familiar to me. Did we do Project Twinkle already? I don't think we did. I know that I've had I've had stuff for it, but I don't know if we ever got to it or not. Okay, Project Twinkle episode at some point. I agree with this. Which is, by the way, the government, by the way, invested tons of money in something. They legit call it Project Twinkle. And then something. <laughs>